So is screen visible to you? I have shared the screen. Yes, sir. Ah. Yes. So yesterday we have seen, means till yesterday we have seen uh, all the types of problems of super node. Now, if there is a combination of such type of problems, then how to tackle that problem? That is this problem for the network shown in the figure, determine the voltage Vx. So Vx is asked to find and in this network, the voltage sources are there, independent voltage sources, then current sources are there, resistances are there. So this is type 1 problem, also type 2 problem, then dependent sources are there in diamond block. So it is type 3 problem also and since between two nodes there is a voltage source present, independent voltage source present and there is no resistance in this particular branch. So that means it is type 4 problem also. So how to tackle such type of problem? So let us start first of all. Find out how many nodes are there. So three nodes, V1, V2 and V3. So three nodes are there. I assumed the non-reference nodes are three. V1, V2 and V3. So their potentials are V1, V2 and V3. And one reference node whose potential is zero volt. So that is this node. So these three non-reference node and one reference node. At reference node, the voltage is as usual, 0 volt. Okay. Now, assuming all the currents at all the nodes, they are moving away from the node or junction. So, we have assumed these currents I1, I2 and since this V1 and V2 forms a super node, there is no current flowing in this branch. And then we'll show this as I3, I4, I5 for this particular node, I6, I7 and I8. So all currents we have assumed that they are moving away from the nodes. Now node 1 and 2, they are forming a super node. So writing a voltage equation for this super node. So what we can get? That is V1 minus V2 equal to 6 because why V1 minus V2 because the polarity of this battery 6 volt battery is positive on left hand side and negative on right hand side so left hand side voltage is V1 and right hand side voltage is V2 so more voltage is V1 than V2 so V1 minus V2 will be this voltage 6 volt so let us say this is equation number 1. Then we have to apply KCL at this super node. So applying KCL at super node, that means this I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4 plus I5 equal to 0. So this is KCL at this super node. So after applying super, uh, KCL at super node, these current values we are interested to find. So I have taken this circuit again here. So value of I1 no need to find because in I1 branch the 2 ampere current is flowing and it is exactly in opposite direction than that of I1. So I1 is nothing but minus 2. So first value is minus 2 then I2. I2 is V1 plus 5 volt because this polarity of this voltage 5 volt, it is minus here and plus in opposite direction. Current is flowing from negative to positive of this battery. So its potential will be positive. So V1 plus 5 divided by 4 ohm, that will be I2. Then I3. 
I3 is V2 minus 2Vx divided by 10 ohm. Then this I4, I4 is V2 minus V3 divided by 11 ohm. So that is this current I4. Then I5, for I5 it is V2 minus 8 volt and minus this V3 divided by 7 ohm. So this is the current I5. Now substitute the values of all the values of current in this equation equal to 0. Take out LCM, it is coming out as 3080. Then multiply the numerators by the respective values and club all the terms of V1 together, V2 together, Vx together, V3 together and constants on other side. Let us say this is equation number 2. Now Vx is one more unknown in this. So we want equation of Vx. So Vx is nothing but the voltage drop across this eleven ohm resistance. And its polarity is positive on this left hand side. So plus Vx and minus Vx. So this plus side is towards V2. That means V2 is more than V3. So V2 minus V3 will be this Vx potential. So Vx is equal to V2 minus V3. Substitute this value of Vx in this equation number 2 so that you will get an equation in terms of V1, V2 and V3 and a constant. So let us say this is equation number 3. Then apply KCL at junction 3 which is not a super junction. So apply normal KCL at junction 3. So at that junction 3 currents are moving away from that junction I6, I7 and I8. Now summation of these 3 currents will be equal to 0. Find out values of I6, I7 and I8. Or otherwise you can take it from this equation also but it is in the reverse direction or otherwise you find it uh, from this junction only. So it is V3 minus V2 divided by 11 is the value of I6. Then I7 no need to find because 12 ampere current is flowing in that branch and it is exactly in opposite direction to that of I7. So uh, sorry. It is in the direction of I7, 12 ampere. So I7 will be positive. So plus 12 plus this V3 plus 8 minus V2 divided by this 7 ohm. So will be the current I8. Substitute the values of I6, I7, I8 in this equation. Take out LCM and then club all the terms of V2, V3, together and constants on another side so that you will get an equation as minus 18 V2 plus 18 V3 equal to minus 1012. Let us say it is equation number 4. So now there are three unknowns and three equations. Equation 1, 3 and 4 and unknowns are V1, V2, V3. Solve them simultaneously using calculator to get the values of V1 as 1.7 volt, V2 as minus 4.3 volts and V3 as minus 60.5 volts. So you got values of V1, V2 and V3. Now what is asked in the question is for the network shown in figure determine the value of voltage Vx. So Vx voltage which is available across this E1 volt that we are interested to find and its polarity is positive on left hand side and negative on right hand side. The left hand side potential is V2. So V2 minus V3 is this Vx. So value of Vx is equal to V2 minus V3. You have calculated V2 as minus 4.3 and V3 as minus 60.5. So substitute the values, you will get the value of Vx as 56.2 volts. Now the same circuit you can simulate in the simulation software which we are having and then you can 
find the result whether it is same as that of the calculated or not okay so i have left that exercise to you so you calculate it so that's all about the node analysis so till now we have finished with the mesh analysis and node analysis in mesh analysis we have seen four cases in node analysis also we have seen four cases that is four types of problems now next we will move to theorems and along with this we have already seen the um, supply or uh, the source transformation and source uh, reduction that also we have seen so for uh, the next topic of theorems you will require some uh, resistance calculation so if the values of resistances are available in the form of star and their values are say r1 r2 and r3 and if you want to make it as a delta then how to make delta from this star so that is this first resistance a that is equal to it is connected in between these two resistances that's why because this one and three terminal this will form this zh or ra so that's why it is near to this branches zh1 and zh3 so it is sum of zh1 plus zh3 and plus zh1 into zh3 upon zh2 so this is the value of zh similarly you can find value of zb as zh1 plus zh2 plus zh1 zh2 upon zh3 so that is value of zb and zc you can calculate from this z2 plus z3 divided uh, plus z2 z3 upon z1 so this is star connection transformed into a delta connection equivalent delta connection now reverse is also possible if you have got a delta connection of resistances or impedances then you can make it as a star so for making star let us say this star i have made it here from one is here and this z z1 is placed here then second is placed here and third terminal is placed means third resistance is placed over here so this z1 this z1 is near to this z a and z b so z1 will be equal to z a into z b divided by sum of all three z a plus z b plus z c then z2 is equal to it is near to z b and z c so it is z b into z c divided by sum of all z a z b and z c and the value of z c z3 which is near to z c and z a so it is equal to z a into z c divided by sum of all three z a z b and jdc so wherever this problem will come will again uh, refresh it or revise it and then we'll move to that okay so let us start our discussion with theorems so first theorem we have got four theorems in our syllabus one is superposition theorem thevenin's theorem norton's theorem and maximum power transfer theorem so today we will begin our discussion with superposition theorem so what superposition theorem states is that the superposition principle states that the voltage across or current through an element in a linear circuit is the algebraic sum of the voltages across or current through that element due to each independent source acting alone so what do you mean by this if in a particular network if n number of sources are there voltage source may be current source uh, only independent independent voltage source and current source if n number is present in a network then you can find out you can replace all n minus 1 sources by their internal resistances and 
operate only one source at a time so operating one source at a time you find out what is the current flowing through that particular element or what is the voltage across that particular element through which you want to find the current or across which you want to find voltage then you replace that by its internal impedance operate second source find out current or voltage then operate third source similarly you go on operating all n sources one by one or one after another and find out the current flowing through that particular element each time then at the end you can sum all these currents so that the net current flowing through that particular element is equal to the summation of all these currents when all the current sources or voltage sources they are operating individually okay if not understood we we'll, uh, i hope you will uh, your ideas will be clear if we we'll solve a problem and now while turning off the inactive sources so how to do that independent voltage sources zero volt means it is a short circuit so for voltage source you have to make it as a short circuit and for current sources you have to make it as a open circuit and one thing you have to keep in mind that dependent sources are left intact means in the circuit how many number of uh, dependent sources are there so all these sources will be kept intact so you need not have to touch them they will be as it is so will uh, so this is the uh, procedure step wise uh, what we have to do so step 1 is select a single source acting alone short the other voltage sources and open the current sources if internal resistances are not known then you have to short it if they are known then replace them by their internal resistances or impedances then step 2 is find the current through or voltage across the required element due to the source under consideration using a suitable network simplification technique so two network simplification techniques we have seen till now one is mesh analysis and another is node analysis so you can use any of these or you can use again uh, your kvl and kcl simply using kvl and kcl also you can solve that network okay so that is step number 2 then step 3 is repeat the above two steps for all the sources so one after another you have to replace them and you have to perform these steps 1 and 2 repeatedly and then step 4 is add all the individual effects produced by the individual sources to obtain the total current in or voltage across that particular element okay so let us see uh, example so using superposition theorem find the voltage across four ohm resistance so we need to find the voltage across this four ohm resistance two sources are there one is the voltage source and another is the current source in superposition theorem number of sources we all the time are talking about the independent sources that means independent voltage source and independent current source if the dependent sources are there we'll tackle it later on and uh, we need not have to bother about them we have to keep it as it is in the circuit how that will see in the uh, problems now in this numerical we want to find the voltage across this 4 ohm resistance and two sources are there so what we do first one source at a time so let us say this 6 volt source will operate at a time this 3 ampere current source is not present so that means we have to replace this and for current source we have to keep it open circuit and second time 
when we'll operate this voltage source uh, we'll replace this voltage source we have to replace it by a short circuit and then find out voltage across this four ohm resistance so let us uh, go one by one so if in this circuit a only voltage source 6 volt voltage source is operating this current source which was present here that i have opened so current sources should be open and voltage sources should be shorted so in figure b when only 3 ampere current source is operating i have shorted this voltage source so two cases as there are two sources so there will be two different figures in figure 1 or figure a only voltage source is operating current source i have kept it open and in figure b only current source is operating i have kept voltage source as short circuit and remaining elements as it is now we want to find voltage across this v1 so find out voltage when this voltage source is operating how to find it is now simple network it is a simple loop one loop through which you can find the value of i1 i1 is simply 6 volt divided by 8 plus 4 that is 12 so 6 by 12 will be value of i1 and this i1 into 4 will be the voltage v1 so v1 will be equal to this 6 divided by 12 and into 4 so it is coming out as 2 volt okay so this voltage v1 i have found out as 2 volt when only this voltage source of 6 volt is operating now if this current source is operating i want to find this i3 current then this i3 into this 4 ohm will be the voltage across v2 right so how to find i3 i3 i can find it from current division rule this total current flowing in this network entering here in this junction it is 3 ampere and it is divided in two currents i3 and i2 if i want to find i3 then how i to find it this total current into opposite branch resistance divided by sum of this total resistance okay so i3 will be equal to 3 ampere into 8 ohm divided by 8 plus 4 so that is the value of i3 and i3 into 4 ohm will be equal to v2 so v2 i have got it as 8 volt now v1 when only this voltage source was operating i have got it as 2 volt and when only this 3 ampere current is operating i have got this voltage v2 as 8 volt so what will be the net voltage across this resistance when both the sources are operating that superposition theorem states that the voltage individual voltage this v1 when this individual source was operating v2 when this individual source was operating you have to sum all these voltages and that should be the algebraic sum so v1 plus v2 will be the actual voltage v and that is equal to 2 plus 8 equal to 10 volt so 10 volt is the voltage across this 4 ohm resistance when both the resistances will operate simultaneously so when this both these sources are operating the voltage across this 4 ohm resistance it is coming as 10 volt understood so that was a simple problem just for the sake of understanding i have taken that simple problem now let us move to our uh, um, problems regular problems from that ravi singh's book the so example number 3.3 use the superposition theorem to find the current through 8 ohm resistance so this 8 ohm resistance i'll shift this i'm unable to see the circuit yes so this is a resistance one voltage source is given and this another so there are two voltage sources so for superposition theorem 
you have to make one as short circuit first and operate only one find out the current through this 8 ohm resistance then make this voltage source as short circuit and operate only this 6 volt source find out what is the current through this and then sum these two okay so that that simple it is okay so let us begin our discussion by making this 6 volt battery as short so only 4 volt battery is operating all the resistances are at its place and only this 6 volt battery is shorted why shorted because it is a voltage source you have to um, take care that all the voltage sources you have to short and current sources you have to open so as it is a voltage source you will make a short circuit here now it is very simple uh, resistive network is there so you can reduce it these two resistances are in parallel so you can plug and eight you can solve this parallel combination to one resistance how to solve that 12 into 8 divided by 12 plus 8 so that will be this resistance then it is in series with 10 ohm resistance so you have to add it with this 10 and then that combination is again parallel with this 15 so that parallel combination you have to solve. yes any problem yes any problem any difficulty any doubt you want to ask avi no sir okay then fine uh so this resistance combination you have to do and then you have to find the current flowing through this so first you will find i then you will find this i1 by current division rule and then you will find this i dash by current division rule again okay so solve this by series parallel reduction technique this 12 into 8 divided by 12 plus 8 so it comes out to be 4.8 this 4.8 will be in series with this 10 ohm so 10 ohm and 4.8 now this will become 14.8 in parallel with 15 so 14.8 in parallel with 15 so it is approximately 15 parallel 15 so it will be half of that so it will become 7.45 and it is in series with 5 ohm resistance so this is simple network now so this total current i you can find by 4 volt divided by 5 plus this 7.45 so that is coming as 0.32 ampere then this is i and you want to find i1 so total current i into opposite branch resistance is 15 ohm into uh, uh, sorry divided by sum of these two resistances so 0.32 ampere into 15 divided by 15 plus 14.8 it is coming out as 0.616 ampere then this current is again here i1 we are interested to find this i dash so this is now again total current we want to find current through this branch so total current into opposite branch resistance that is 12 ohm divided by 12 plus 8 so it is 0.16 into 12 divided by 12 plus 8 that is coming out as 0.096 ampere in downward direction so that current is flowing in downward direction why we are uh, um, writing this direction here because at the end you have to do algebraic sum if the current flowing through this battery second battery it may result in upward direction current so if it is in upward direction current then it will be subtraction of these two currents and if the direction is same in downward direction then you have to add them that's why we have taken Um, given uh, direction over there now let us see second battery is operating alone first battery now 4 volt is shorted again similar network you have got 
again go by similar network reduction so resistors of these two 5 and 15 are in parallel in series with 10 then that combination is in parallel with 8 and this is in series with 12 so you reduce this network if you will reduce this 5 and 15 in parallel that is 5 into 15 divided by 5 plus 15 it is coming out as 3.75 it is in series with 10 so it is 13.75 in parallel with 8 so multiplication of these two divided by summation of these two will be resultant of that so it is 5.06 and it is in series with 12 now it is only one simple network this voltage v divided by this r 12 plus 5.06 will give you this i and it is coming it as 0.35 so this i is known to you we are interested to find this i double dash that is 8 ohm resistance so that is equal to this total i into 13.75 divided by sum of these two so that is coming at 0.22 ampere in downward direction now both the currents flowing through this 8 ohm they are in downward direction so if both the sources are operating simultaneously the sum of current that is by superposition theorem i is equal to i dash plus i double dash that is sum of these two it is 0.316 ampere in downward direction so this is the numerical okay understood so how much is the time left uh, still time is there so we can solve one more problem so we'll go for one more problem and then uh, meanwhile at uh, we'll conduct our practical session at uh, immediately after this so at 3:15 i will send you a link after this lecture because i have to tell um, means i have to spend some more time for recovering this uh, recording so after recovery of this recording i'll put you the link in the box okay so that link will be for practicals and today we are going to see fifth practical on virtual lab so try to be present at that point okay so let us start with uh, the next problem example number 3.5 find the current in 10 ohm resistance so we want to find here the current through this 10 ohm resistance there are two sources now one is voltage source of 10 volt and another is current source of 4 ampere so let us operate first a uh, 10 volt source it is acting alone so this current source as we have to make it open so this branch won't be present so 2 ohm resistance 5 ohm resistance 10 ohm resistance this is the network okay and this is as it is so 10 volt battery is operating now this 5 and 2 they are in series you add them they are parallel with 10 so you can club them or no need to find because we are interested to find this current only so that current will be this total current if we are able to find this i then this i into opposite branch resistance 7 divided by 7 plus 10 okay so this 7 and 10 so that equivalent we have found out it has 4.12 and then this 10 volt divided by 5.12 will be 1.95 is this i now this total current i into opposite branch resistance divided by sum of these two resistances will be this i double dash so that value we have got and then step 2 is you short circuit the voltage source operate only this current source now if you want to operate this current source again these two resistances they are in parallel so you can make the parallel combination this 2 ohm resistance is series so this is one side network this is another side network and this 4 ampere it is dividing in these two branches so you can find the current in one branch as total current into opposite branch resistance divided by sum of these two so it is 4 into 5 divided by 2.91 plus 5 it is coming out as 2.53 ampere then by current division rule 
again you can further go to find this i double dash through 10 ampere and it is coming out as 2.53 into 1 divided by 1 plus 10 and it is 0.23 ampere okay and it is in downward direction so first current is also in downward direction second current is also in downward direction so by third step is by superposition theorem i is equal to i dash plus i double dash that is 0.8 plus 0.23 Equal to one point zero three ampere in downward direction. Got this? So simulation you can do. Simulation you can do in the same softwares, and um, it is same circuit. Uh, so I think um, I have left it to you for simulations. So you go for simulation. and check whether the same results you are getting or not okay i hope uh, we are uh, running out of time so we'll stop here uh, for uh, today's lecture and for next problem we'll go uh, means to, uh, tomorrow and uh, today again at 315 we are meeting for practical okay is it okay avi Okay. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, and uh, for the practicals, four practicals which you have already completed. So for that purpose, we'll keep uh, one discussion sort of uh, uh, session. So in which you have to present in the same manner in which I am presenting you. So you show. I'll share my screen to you. You show your simulation results. and how you have calculated to explain it okay and then at the end we'll see how to make a submission okay and then if difficulties are there we'll solve it one by one but today we are going to perform our next practical okay fine so thank you bye bye and take care